I traveled from Melbourne, Victoria, Australia to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo in September 2024. I decided to go uh, last year when I saw how popular the event was and all the excellent videos on YouTube which showed how fun and exciting it was as well as all the Atari Age forums showing how great it is especially for the Intellivision community and all the amazing title releases. I uh, watched from afar and thought, wow, wouldn't it be great to be a part of something like this? For those who don't know, traveling from Australia to most places, with the exception of Southeast Asia and New Zealand, it takes a very long time to get anywhere and normally requires either uh, an expensive direct route or a multi-stage journey. I don't sleep particularly well in economy class, as most people don't, um, and because you have time zone crossings and significant jet lag implications, sleeping is important, especially on this journey, which was only four nights in Portland, Oregon. So I priced around to see what the best fare I could get. and. My preferred airline is anyone that's aligned with Virgin Australia, as I have status mm -hmm. there. But uh, Singapore Airlines was the airline of choice, and I could get uh, premium economy at the price that I could afford. And I was able to upgrade the segments to Singapore uh, from Melbourne to Singapore and Singapore to Melbourne in business class. So as I left and as I arrived, I would have a good night's sleep. I didn't really anticipate how bad those premium economy segments would be, but we can talk about that in a minute. So as it was a business class flight, I was able to check into a Star Alliance lounge. I could have gone into the Silver Chris lounge, which was uh, just upstairs, but it hadn't opened. And the Air New Zealand lounge is much larger and much more comfortable. So at 11.30, uh, uh, we boarded the plane and we headed on our eight hour journey to Singapore. After a pleasant flight to Singapore, I had a couple of hours wait at the Singapore airport when I had to board the flight from Singapore to Seattle. It was on this flight that I discovered that premium economy isn't as good as I expect it would be. The seats are only marginally wider than standard economy and I am no better at sleeping in a slightly wider seat than I am in sitting in a narrow seat which has the same amount of recline. Maybe a little bit more but still I was only able to get about two hours sleep. As you can see from the photos uh, it was pretty cramped um, the chairs weren't that wide, the food offerings weren't too bad, um, as you can see I selected the saute and the pancakes. At Seattle I had to clear customs and I only had two and a half hours of time before the next flight took off and I needed every bit of that. I had 16 minutes before the next flight and I was in the air. It was a very fast flight into Portland, only 30 minutes. It's now Thursday, US time, and I take a tram into town. I get to see some local entertainment. Uh, and uh, when I'm finished, I walk past the exhibition center. I met up with the Intellivision guys at the convention center, and we went out for dinner at Red Robin with the group. That was a fun evening to meet people. As we were there before 12 o'clock, which is the opening of the front hall, as I was able to take a couple of short videos that just shows people setting up prior to the event being open to the public. Uh, sorry about that view. Um, but the place was ready, neat and tidy, and the doors opened at 12 o'clock. At this stage, vendors were eagerly putting their last finishes on their booths. So at this stage, the show is open. That is a prototype 7800 plus next to a regular one. I caught up with Kay Savitz. Having a look around at the expo, there are plenty of unusual things to look at and products to buy. 
Rick Reynolds reckoned that I should get one of these all-you-can-drink sodas, so I did. I might have regretted it. And on the first day, I bought a pile of stuff, as you can see here. So half of the expo was split. The back half of the expo was still closed to general visitors, and preparations were still happening. In this clip here, you can see John Hancock autographing his games for the Intellivision community, for those who wanted it. Meanwhile, in the front of the building, there was plenty of action. This is the Atari Age booth. You can see there's plenty of people. They've all their games set up and the consoles going. Uh, and Atari Age had plenty of titles available for sale. The Intellivision release of Akalabeth at this stage was not available. This next clip was recorded on Sunday at about midday. But for those who don't know that the Portland Retro Gaming is not just an expo, it also has panels and events. I had planned to go to a number of these different panels. I ended up only going to two, which was Ken Gagne's presentation on the Apple II origins of today's games, which was really good, and talked about how games had spawned new games, and some still have their origins in Apple II. And uh, if you can catch that panel, online uh, in their YouTube release. Hopefully that comes out soon. That's certainly worth listening to. And the other one was Adrian Black's uh, repair advice, which was uh, really good for those who are starting out to repair their 8-bit or whatevers uh, and go through a structured problem-solving technique. Bit of a segue, uh, Adrian Black was walking past the Intellivision stand and I was able to spend a fair bit of time talking to him, which was fantastic. But for the most part, I was at the Intellivision Revolution stand, socializing with uh, Rick, um, Rev, Luke, Brad, Casey, Eric, Steve, Frank, Michael, Seamart, uh, Sean, William, and others, um, talking f about all sorts of things. Uh, got to see the amazing a light gun and all the different adapters that have been developed. Got to try out some prototype games. I also had the privilege of playing baseball against Casey, where I'm pretty sure that I won. He'll probably deny it, but I think that everyone would agree that I did a world-class performance. I think it was also fair to say that it crossed my mind that it might be challenging to break into a group that has uh, known each other for so many years and this being my first time over there and being from another country it might be challenging to um, relate and form relationships with these people but that was not even close to being the case um, the television group at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo were extremely welcoming friendly and uh, we all had a good time there's a lot of banter and fun times um, and also people uh, looking after each other. I knew I would beat myself up if I didn't spend some time playing some of these video games that you're seeing. Uh, I certainly took the opportunity to do that. Um, I, off the top of my head, I play Congo Bongo pretty terribly. Um, the right and left movement was a bit dodgy, so I was unsuccessful in even completing the first level. I also uh, checked out Qbert because in the Intellivisionaries podcast, I learned that the Qbert console had a solenoid that would knock the cabinet uh, on certain game events, and I certainly experienced that, so that was cool. I saw that Atari Video Pinball was there, and that was a very interesting game. It's one of the early Atari titles, and it basically had a, an overlay that gave the game color, and then underneath it had just a black and white ball that moved around in the paddles. But it was a pretty interesting implementation of a game, and very advanced for a game of its time.
It was about this time that I noticed that there was a llama walking in the video ahead of me. This I've just pasted in after I saw it. But uh, when the video comes back, you will see a llama walking around. But this is uh, Caesar, the no drama llama that people are queued up for to get cuddles and kisses from. So I'll see if you can see him in just a moment as I walk around. I'll resume speaking once we get to the reason people come to the show, which is the Television Revolution stand. That'll be in about three minutes from now. And no doubt this is what you've all been waiting to see. This is the Intellivision Revolution stand. So you can see the crew in there, uh, all having a good time, all the games are on display, and there are no Pac-Man Anthology titles to be seen because they're already sold. We can see the Steve Jones box collection has also sold at this point. Um, and uh, William is still selling his products here at Customer Surgery. On this side, if I was careful, you can see the Duck Hunt 
demo here on the screen so you can see the light gun there and A group of us got together at the end of the show to say goodbye. On Monday morning, I had to leave early to go to the airport. I misjudged the boarding time and ordered breakfast. I ate about 10 bites before I had to run to board this plane to San Francisco. Then boarded the plane from San Francisco to Singapore, 16 and a half hours, where they served inedible food. And once I got to Singapore, I was able to access the lounge, caught a business class flight to Melbourne, and had a beautiful night's sleep. Thank you for watching, and I really recommend going to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. It's a lot of fun and a great way to meet fellow enthusiasts.